Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this is going to be kind of a different video today. I wanted to talk about something that's a personal issue for me. It's something that I struggle with almost on a daily basis, and that is migraines. And I think that a lot of people have migraines, and maybe you have them as well. If you don't have migraines, you are very, very lucky because they're very... How can I describe a migraine to a person who doesn't have them? It's it's not just a headache. You know, it's not just a headache. It's sometimes, you know, you're sensitive to light, you're sensitive to sound, you're sensitive to smells. It can make you very nauseous. Sometimes you might throw up. It's just terrible pain. Just just it's just like it can be very very intense pain sometimes. And that has really made writing hard for me. That's just, that's my own like personal struggle. So I thought I would make a video to offer some maybe tips or things that I do that sometimes help my migraines, sometimes they don't. But if there's anybody else out there that has migraines, maybe some of these things might help you. Or maybe you've tried all of them. I've tried a lot of different things. I've tried different medications. I've even started trying the newer drugs, the auto-injectable ones. I forget what they're called. CGRP something or other. I might have that wrong. But I've been trying those and that kind of works. But I'm still having a lot of migraines. And so... The next thing for me to try is Botox, which I never thought I would. But here I am. I just turned 40 years old and I'm getting Botox. Not for cosmetic reasons. Just, you know, just it's these like, you know, injections that they put right up here. So at this point, I'll do anything if it can get rid of the pain. But today I'm feeling good. So I thought today would be a good day to go over all these things that I use that help my migraines. And hopefully, if you have migraines, hopefully some of these things might help you too. And even if you're not a writer, if uh, you just if you just happen to stumble upon this video because you're looking for ways to to help migraines, you know you can definitely you know watch, keep watching because I mean this isn't really just specifically for writers, but because I write, it's very it, migraines make it very difficult for me to write because especially when you're talking about sensitivity to light and when you're on a computer screen and like the glare from the computer screen can really make your pain a lot worse. You know what I'm talking about if you have migraines. So the first thing is kind of something that's kind of obvious but very low lighting. I'll show you my lighting in just a little bit but first let's talk about computer glare. One of the things that I like to do is, and maybe this is obvious, but you know, I just turn down the brightness on my computer because it's too bright. And I know a lot, I know when I used to write in Microsoft Word a lot, a lot of times what I would do is I would make the screen dark. You could like go in and you have like the different views. I haven't used Microsoft Word in so long, so I don't know if anything has changed about it, but you could like view your document as a web page and you could change the background color. So I would change the background to black and then I would have the text a different color that was easier for me to read. And that, sometimes that helped because sometimes just staring at the white screen was just too much. Now what I do since I use Google Docs, I, I just, I don't know if there is a way to make the screen dark in Google Docs, so maybe I will research that. But right now, I just tone down the brightness on the screen, and that helps some. And if you happen to have an iPad, if you notice when you turn down the brightness, sometimes you can turn on the night shift, and that sometimes helps too because it's it's kind of like, um, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like when it gets a little bit darker outside, and it gets a little darker inside. I guess it kind of tones down uh, so the light is not so harsh. Um, so it's it's night shift. Uh, so if you have an iPhone, iPad, uh, try that out when you adjust the brightness and see if that it makes it easier for you to look at the screen. Sometimes it does. 
Um, sometimes it makes it too dark for me and I, I just have to turn it off, but um, you know, try, try it out, see if it helps you. Another thing that may be obvious, if you wear glasses, make sure you get the anti-glare coating put on it. I think that makes such a huge difference. I know that one time what happened was when I got glasses, they they put the um the anti-glare in one of the lens and then like the other lens they messed it up and they just put like the regular lens in there and it was so annoying because I'd be sitting in my chair and like my lamp would be like right beside me and I just like kept seeing the reflection of the light like on my lens and it was so annoying and so finally you know I just had to you know have them correct that but um, that really helps. And so really that's that's great for if you're on your computer and, you know, you have that glare from the computer screen. So that just really helps. So definitely if you wear glasses, make sure you get that anti-glare coating on it. So let's go look at my Himalayan salt lamp now. Okay, right, this is a Himalayan salt lamp. And some people say that it can help with migraines. Um, my friend actually bought this for me because she, she had heard that it helps with migraines. And I don't know if it does or not. I, I certainly don't think that it hurts. And this thing is so wonderful. Now, I'll turn it on and it doesn't really look good right now because uh, it's, there's too much natural light in here. But when it's dark, this thing is just... Um, such a very soft light. And I'm gonna turn it off right now. All right, but so you can see it a little better. There's no glare. Um, but this is actually a really nice light. It's a very low light. And so a low light is something that I really suggest because you know, when you have a migraine, like the last thing you want is to be in a really bright room. And, or you, you don't like those fluorescent lights or anything like that. So something like a Himalayan salt lamp is really good because it's just, it's just such a low light. Um, other lights like a night light or maybe a low wattage light bulb. Those can also be really good too. Another thing I'm going to suggest is something that you should talk to your doctor first before you try. Definitely talk to your doctor before taking any supplements. But I am going to suggest taking a magnesium supplement. So years ago when I went to um, my doctor and we tried so many different things, um, so many different supplements to help with my migraines. And one of the things that she discovered that I was low in after she did some blood work, she discovered that my magnesium levels were lower than they should be and if you have low magnesium that can contribute to migraines so she suggested a dig a magnesium supplement now there there's different kinds of magnesium supplements or there's different kinds of magnesium um and i don't remember all the kinds of different magnesium but what she wanted me to take was magnesium torate and so this is what the this is the brand that I use. I got it on Amazon. Um, it's cardiovascular Research, magnesium torate, and I take like five of these a day. I take like one in the morning with all my other supplements, and then I take like four at lunch. I don't know if you're supposed to take that many. That seems to be the magic number for me. So I take five of these. And I like this brand particularly because uh, the, the capsules are really small. Um, so this is like the size of them. I have, um, I've gotten the uh, magnesium supplement from like CVS. Uh, I don't know if it was the CVS brand, but I got magnesium supplements from CVS one time. Um, and it wasn't Torate. Torate's kind of hard to find. Um, I think in the drugstores or pharmacies, you're going to find some other kind of magnesium. But the point I'm making is that the, the magnesium supplements I got from CVS, um, it was like swallowing a horse pill. The thing was so huge. I was afraid I was going to choke on it. 
I don't like that. So I like these because they're very small capsules or, or regular size capsules and they're much easier to swallow. So, so try a magnesium supplement. Um, you might be low on it. It's worth a shot. Now, there are other supplements you can take for migraines. I have taken Feverfew in the past. I've also taken Butterbur. And I'm not currently taking any of those right now. What I had discovered is that I'll take Feverfew for a while. And I'll take that for a good long while. And it'll seem to help. And then it's like, after a while, I guess my body gets gets used to it and then it doesn't really work anymore so after a while it just doesn't work and so maybe I'll start back on it again and maybe when I start back on it again maybe it'll work sometimes what I would do is I would rotate my supplements so I would try the fever few for a while and then the fever few would stop working and then I would try the butter burr and that would that would help for a while and and now I'm not currently taking anything because it, it just, no matter what supplements I took, nothing was working. So I just stopped taking them and I just, you know, just saving my money basically. But I'm not going to give up my magnesium supplement um, because I think this really helps. And because I was actually low in magnesium, I don't want to be low in magnesium again. So I am going to keep taking this. Okay, so next I have something that I love. This is Sombra. I'm going to hold it up close and maybe you can see it. Sombra. This is natural pain relieving gel and it is wonderful. I love this stuff. It smells, it smells really good. Um, it has... Let's see, what does it have in it? Camphor and menthol in it. So anyway, it comes in like a, a jar like this. And then you can also get it as a roll-on as well. And this stuff lasts for like a long time. I've had this, this particular jar for quite a while, for years. <laughs> and I still have plenty of it. Now, there's two kinds of Sombra. There's um, the Warm Therapy and the Cool Therapy. You can go on Amazon. You can buy this. It's um, I like the Warm Therapy. I, I don't really know the difference between the Warm Therapy and the Cool Therapy. But I just know the Warm Therapy was the first one I tried and it worked. So I've just stuck with it. If you remember years ago, there used to be this product called Head On. And remember, they had, like, those really annoying commercials, you know, and they'd have, like, the lady, you know, like, rolling the thing over her forehead. And I tell you, that stuff, head-on, that was wonderful stuff. I was so upset when they stopped making that. But this is a good alternative to head-on. The only thing you want to be really careful about is that you don't want to get it in your eyes. Um, that has happened to me before. Um, sometimes I will put it on my forehead and a lot of times I, I just put like a very small amount like right here, you know, right here on, under my eyebrows. And then later on, I forget that I have that I have it on and I touch my forehead and then like I rub my eye and then like all of a sudden my eye like starts burning and I have to go get a washcloth and put some water on it and try to like stop the sombra burn. That's not a good thing. So just be very careful. Um, I don't really know if this was intended to be put on your forehead. This is really also great for neck pain, shoulder pain, like if you get like that pain, you know, right um, right here by your shoulders. Um, this is some really, really good stuff. So I do recommend this. Um, you could probably buy other things like this as well, I, um, but this, this is good stuff, and it smells good, too. So, you just make sure you wash your hands really well after using this. Because, like I say, if you accidentally rub your eye, it's going to burn. But this kind of just feels, when you put it on, it just feels, um, I don't know how to describe it. It just kind of feels a little tingly. And you kind of concentrate on that and then like you kind of don't really notice the pain anymore so um i guess that's how it works but um that, this does really help me now another thing that i have tried is this stuff right here it's 
I'm not even sure exactly how to pronounce this. Um, Ossinil. You see that? Ossinil. I don't know if it's in focus or not. Um, this stuff right here is really interesting. It is something that you squirt up your nose just one time. <laughs> when you put this up your nose, it will burn. It will burn. It will burn. And uh, it will really burn. <laughs> Um, I forget what's in this. It's kind of like, I guess, maybe some peppers or something. Like hot peppers. I, I don't really know. But the, uh, the, the idea behind this stuff is that um, when you put this up your nose, you, when, you, when you squirt it up there, and it, it really burns. And what happens is when uh, it burns so bad that your eyes will, like, start watering and you also have to constantly like blow your nose as well. Now, I, I don't use this very often because it's really, I don't know if it really works as well. Um, and it just kind of makes me feel like kind of congested and stuffy afterwards. But the, the idea is that it burns so bad that it's supposed to like do something in your brain. It's supposed to... I guess release endorphins and it somehow uh, I guess helps with the pain. I think also in a way it kind of distracts you from the pain. It, it's like it distracts you from the migraine pain and you're concentrating on the burning sensation in your nose. So <laughs> this is um it's okay. You know, like, I use this, like, as a last-ditch effort, like, when nothing else works. I'm like, well, let me just try the Ossinol and see if that works. And that's all homeopathic. But I guess it kind of works. Like, it will distract you from your head pain. But, like, when it's all over, uh, your head pain will be probably returned. So, I mean, it, I like it. Um, I think when I first started using it, I really liked it. And, um... Then, I don't know, I guess it just stopped working for me, so I don't know, whatever. But it's worth a shot. Um, I, I've, I've actually forgot that I had this, and I was looking for stuff for my video, and I realized, oh, yeah, I have this stuff, too, so maybe I'll, like, try this, try this, and, um, maybe I'll start, you. maybe I'll start back using this soon. So, the next thing that has really helped me a lot has been my rice sock. And I actually talked about this in my how to wake up early video. But if you didn't see that video, I'll talk about it now. This is my rice sock. I love this thing. It is just a regular sock filled with white rice. It's these kinds of socks, actually. What you want to do is go out and get, like, the biggest sock you can find. Um, these are, like, a pair of men's tube socks. Um, size 6 to 12, just, you know, just your regular, you know, just a regular sock. And you, you put white rice in it, and what you'll do is you'll put this in the microwave for about a minute and a half, or a minute. It kind of varies with your microwave. Uh, some microwaves need longer, uh, maybe you have a very powerful microwave, but usually a minute is good for me. And so I'll wake up in the morning. And when I wake up in the morning, I have a lot of sinus pain, like right up in here. And I'll have a lot of neck pain. And neck pain sometimes makes my head pain worse. And of course, sinus pain, that makes my, that's, that's head pain. Uh, so what I'll do in the morning is I'll, I got two of these. So I'll put like one under my neck because I wake up in the morning and my neck is hurting. I probably need to replace my pillow, but I will just like lay down with this heated rice sock like on my neck. And sometimes I'll put it on my forehead. You don't want to get it too hot, especially if you, um, if you put it like right over your forehead. Uh, you definitely don't want it to get too hot, but this, it really helps kind of relieve some of that sinus pressure and helps me feel better. So, um, definitely try that. Now, if heat is not your thing, 
if you prefer like an ice pack, that that can work too. I have I have two things that I sometimes use. I've got a regular ice pack, but sometimes when I have head pain, it's like really just right here. And so I like to use this thing right here. It's like um little it's a little eye mask. I like this one because it doesn't have um like the holes in it. Um, so it really can lay over my eye. But I like the I like this one too. I've got also just you know your regular your regular kind of like mask. Actually, I put this in the freezer and I got it way too cold. <laughs> so I kind of let it thaw out for a little while. And now it's actually at a really good temperature. So if I had a headache right now, I would probably really find this very comforting. I tend to use heat more than cold stuff. I used to always use an ice pack and I, sometimes I would like put like an ice pack like right over on top of my head. Uh, but now I don't know. I just kind of, I just like, I guess I just like heat better because I'm always so cold. And like in the winter time, like sometimes the last thing you want to do is put on something really cold, like an ice pack. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe you like cold butter. So anyway, the, both of these are really good options, for, you know, heat or cold. <laughs> this next one is something that may help you or it may not help you. When I have a migraine, I am very sensitive to smells. Not just sound, um, not just sight, not just sensitive to light. I am also very sensitive to smells. In fact, I feel like when I have a migraine, I feel like I'm a bloodhound or something. Like I can just smell everything like so, so clear. And, and usually it just like smells are just too overwhelming, especially like perfume. Perfume, I can't stand the smell of perfume or cologne or cigarette smoke. All of those things definitely trigger migraines for me. So, this may or may not work for you. So, what, the, what it is, is essential oil. Now, I got this essential oil right here. This is um, like a sinus blend oil. And this smells really, really good. I don't know exactly what's all in here. I'm pretty sure eucalyptus is in it, but I, I don't know what else. And this is this essential oil is made by a local salon. It's like their special blend. So it's not really for sale online anywhere. But what you can do is you can go to a salon. Um, you can go to a spa in your area and or wherever they sell essential oils and you can try some out so i guess it's a uh, aromatherapy <laughs> um you can put it in a diffuser uh what i like to do for this particular sinus oil is i just kind of get a little dab and i just kind of uh like put it on my nose just like on the outside of my nose or like right under my nose and it really helps open up my sinus because even when I have a sinus headache, sinus headaches can sometimes turn into migraines. So, um, this is some really good stuff. But yeah, what you can do is go to a place, um, try out different oils, uh, wherever they sell essential oils, just sample some of them and see if they smell good basically if they smell good if it's pleasant to smell then it it might be something that'll help you um it, i would really suggest going somewhere where you can talk to someone because they can probably recommend what oils you need to use um what oils are good for sinus uh what what oils might be good for migraines but uh yeah essential oils are pretty good um sometimes if sometimes essential oils are too much for me if I have a migraine because like I say I'm kind of sensitive to smells but sometimes they can help too so um take it or leave it <laughs> all right so speaking of sinuses another thing that I really like is my little nasal rinse bottle right here and it's kind of like a neti pot uh if you've heard of a neti pot maybe you have a neti pot you use a neti pot um it really helps 
rinse out your sinuses, uh, which can lead to head pain. And so I just, I like this kind, I like this better than the neti pot because with the neti pot, you have to like lean over the sink and, and put your neck at a weird angle. And I can't do that with my neck pain. That That's just too painful for me. But with this, this is easy because what you do with this, you just lean over the sink and you just, I'm not going to demonstrate it or anything, but you just like lean over the sink and you just, you know, put it right here and, and just the water comes out the, your nostril, so the other nostril. So, so much easier to use the neti pot. Um, and it has these little, you buy these little refill packs right here, um, these little salt packets that they're just, um, these little, um, Sinus rinse these little salt packets right here. And you just, what I do is I fill this up with bottled water. I don't use tap water, never use tap water. Um, I fill it up with bottled water and I put the little salt packet in there and um, give it a good shake. And then I put it in the microwave for 20 seconds. My microwave is a pretty good microwave. 20 seconds will do it. Um, the one time that I accidentally put it in there for longer, this is what happened to the bottle. This is why there's like an indention there because I guess I kind of melted it a little bit. Um, but um, yeah, this is some really good stuff. So that'll help clear up your sinuses and that will also help with sinus infections. Um, and so if you can help with the sinus infection, if you can help prevent one of those, you can also help prevent head pain. Because with me, it's like sinus Sinus pain and migraine are really basically the same thing for me. It, the pain, I feel it in the same areas. And so anything you can do to prevent that pain, it will help. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Those are some of my tips and tricks on how to help migraines. And um, hopefully one of those tricks will work for you if you haven't tried one of them. And, you know, if, if you can just help your migraines go if you can just like make the migraines go away like it's so much easier to write because you know how it is like you're it's sometimes it's just you can't even concentrate because the pain is so intense but I do hope that if you have migraines I hope um I hope that you can get some relief um if you have any other additional tips or or maybe something um i haven't mentioned has helped you with your migraines um definitely leave a comment below because i'm always looking for different ways to help my migraines go away i'm really hoping that botox works for me i guess we'll see i did have a friend that had botox and she said it worked for her for about six months so I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for that. All right. I will see you all later. Thank you for watching. If this helped you, please give it a thumbs up. All right. I'll see y'all later. Bye.